Hi, and welcome to Texture, the terms you need to know. I've got a little prickly hedgehog there, couldn't find an echidna, um, and that's just to let you know that texture, you know, we think of texture as something that you can touch. Texture in music means how thick or thin the actual music actually is, how many instruments are playing. So hopefully you'll watch this video first, and then you'll watch the second one, which is all about the concept itself and, and grouping the concept into a way that you can actually answer a question. And then the last video is an explanation of how, um, with a sample piece of music of what you're um, of structuring an actual answer and what to look for. So here we go, texture, the terms you need to know. So the first one is imitation. So we've got to go out to the photocopy machine because it's where a melody or part of is copied by another instrument. So this again you know, can be used in other concepts um, and it has been explained in other concepts. So if you're hearing it um, again, it's okay. Um, it's basically um, an example would be if you hear someone singing and um, you've got backup singers who actually come in and sing parts of the same melody with them, that's imitation. So where a melody or part of it is copied by another instrument at the same time. So monophonic, okay, we've got one little Elvis singing there. So monophonic actually means a single layer, one melodic line performed in unison. Now the tricky thing is you can have monophonic texture, which is still very thick because you could have a hundred people singing the same song and if it's only them singing and no melodic accompaniment, that would still be monophonic because it's one single line or layer. Homophonic is the music we listen to most of the time and it is melody or a single melody with chordal accompaniment. So in other words you can see that little um, person singing there with the guitar. So the guitar is the chordal accompaniment and the person singing would be the melody. But the melody could be played by a saxophone and the chordal accompaniment could be the concert band or um, an orchestra behind it. Okay, It doesn't have to be um, a singer with it at all, it can be any melodic instrument. So polyphonic, we've got lots of little voices there singing. So polyphonic actually means many melodies played at the same time. Okay, so very different melodies um, played at the same time. And there is a distinction between that and someone playing just a different part. Okay, so because um, any part of a polyphonic um, uh, actual composition could be performed on its own and sound decent. Whereas if you're actually playing just a, um, a bass line or something, it doesn't quite sound as nice. So, doubling, we've got some people on a bike doubling there, and it's the same sort of thing. It's two or more instruments playing it at octaves apart, the same melody. So it could be, for example, um, say uh, an, an alto saxophone and a baritone saxophone playing the same part an octave apart. Okay, so that's what doubling is. Similar motion, it means when the melodic contour of two different parts is the same. So they might be starting on very different notes, but they might they will move and um, up and down and have the same shape if you connected the little dots of their um, notes, okay, connect and went dot to dot, you'd actually see that it was the very same shape, so it's similar motion. Like parallel lines, you know, going, they don't actually ever meet, but they, they sort of continue to go in the same um, direction. Contrary motion, on the other hand, is the opposite. So it means when the parts move in the opposite direction to one another. So one starts high and one starts low, and then they might, one, the first one might go low and the, the second one might go high. And you can see in that little um, thing there that they're actually moving um, together and apart, together and apart. And that's what contrary motion is. Okay, It's meaning the opposite of, um, to be contrary with someone is to be um, have an opposite opinion. Unison. Now unison means when two or more instruments play the same note at the same pitch, okay, and at the same time. So so they can both be playing um, the exact same C or the exact same D, it doesn't really matter what note, okay, it just means that they're singing the same notes together, not octaves apart, exactly the same note. A quintet is a group of five people playing together. So in this little quintet, we've got a cello, a viola, two violins, and a piano. The guy in black there is actually only there as a page turner. So a quintet is an ensemble with five performers, but it doesn't have to be just those five instruments. It can be any um, any instruments with um, that have uh, any ensemble with five instruments. An orchestra, though, is a large ensemble, ensemble sorry, featuring instruments from the four families, the string family, brass family, woodwind family, and percussion family. So an orchestra um, has lots and lots of um, people in it, and depending on the size of the orchestra, it could be um, as small as, you know, 
15 people to as large as 200. Okay, it depends in, on um, the size and um, how much money basically someone's got to pay for them to actually play. A trio is an ensemble with three performers. Okay, so you can see three little performers here. We've got a singer, a drummer, and a saxophonist, and that would be a little trio. But it can be any sort of group of instruments, as long as it's only three. It could be a vocal trio, it could be anything. A quartet, if you like Family Guy, that's a barbershop quartet. It's an ensemble with four players or four performers. So it could be a string quartet or a wind quartet or um, a brass quartet. It's basically any ensemble um, that has only four performers. Accompaniment. Now, when you're talking about roles and different things in um, these bits and pieces, this is where it comes in. So accompaniment is music that is based around chords and it supports a melody. So if you can imagine there that in this little picture the um, trumpeter is the um, has a melodic role, this, the double bass there would be the accompaniment, okay? And that'd be the melodic accompaniment and the drummer there would be the rhythmic accompaniment, okay? Because he's playing um, obviously a, a rhythm and he can't play a melody. Tutti, I've got a little tutu there, nothing to do with each other, but it's a way to remember it. It's the whole ensemble playing together. So if you are playing, um, there's an orchestra playing and it's not, you know, it might start off with just the strings playing and then the woodwinds enter and then maybe the brass enters and once the percussion enters and they're all playing together, that's what's called tutti. And here we go, this one is canon. Now I've got a little um, thingy, um, what do you call merry-go-round there because a canon is a round and it's where different entry points so if you were going on to this merry-go-round you'd have a different entry point okay but you'd still go round and round in the same motion the same sort of thing and that's the end